In our last video about avian genetics, we got three incredible questions from a couple of our most loyal followers. Questions that really challenged us to dig deeper into the topic. One of them wanted to know the basic genetic traits, like dominant and recessive genes, to start out in breeding. Another one took us a step further, asking how these genes interact with each other in complex cases, like when a dominant white gene seems to completely hide another color trait. And a third question pushed us to explore how breeders can fix a favorite recessive trait in their lines, a true challenge of mastery. These aren't just their questions, they're questions we all ask at some point. Have you ever wondered why a chick is a completely different color from its parents, or how you can predict the colors of your next clutch? In this video, we won't just answer those specific questions. We'll use our community's curiosity as a starting point to unravel the mysteries of avian genetics. Because this channel is by you and for you, we want to invite you to make this a conversation. If you've ever had a question about your bird's genetics, no matter how simple or complex it seems, leave it in the comments. We'll answer them directly in the chat, and if they're complex enough, we'll turn them into a topic for a future video. Your curiosity is the spark that ignites our next topic. For this reason, I invite you to subscribe if you haven't already, turn on the notification bell so you'll be the first to see our new videos, and if you really find value in this type of content, leave us a like. It's an easy gesture to make, but it helps us a lot to keep growing and reaching more people. To start, let's read the question that sparked this conversation. One of our followers, who is thinking of starting a small backyard flock, asked us, is there a list of dominant and recessive traits in chickens? I'm very interested in thinking of starting a small chicken coop in my backyard. Have you ever marveled at every detail when you see a newborn chick? The color of its feathers, the shape of its legs, the pattern of its comb. It all seems like a small miracle. But behind that apparent magic is a secret code. A master blueprint that is passed from one generation to the next. This blueprint is DNA, the molecule that contains all the instructions for building a living being. Within this vast blueprint, there are specific chapters that dictate each trait. These chapters are what we call genes. Each gene is a small but powerful instruction that determines a specific characteristic. Imagine that each gene is a note in a symphony, and together, all the notes create the unique melody of a bird. The true power of breeding lies in understanding this instruction manual. Every bird you breed is a carrier of an inheritance, a genetic puzzle waiting to be solved. When you manage to decipher that code, you're no longer breeding by chance, you're creating with a purpose. It's a level of connection with your animals that elevates you from a simple caretaker to a true creator. Within the genetic instruction manual, there's a fascinating power play. Think of it this way. The dominant gene is the leader, the trait that always prevails, that shows up regardless of whether the other gene is different. It's the dark feather color that dominates over the light, the comb that stands proudly on a bird. If a bird has one copy of this gene, that's the trait you'll see in its appearance. On the other hand, the recessive gene is the quieter, more timid member of the team. This gene only dares to show its trait when there isn't a dominant gene to hide it. This means for a bird to show a recessive trait, it needs to inherit one copy of the gene from its mother and another from its father. It's the secret that hides in the DNA, waiting for its moment to shine. Understanding this relationship is fundamental for any breeder. It gives you the power to predict. When you cross two birds, it's not a roll of the dice, it's a strategy. If you know which genes are dominant and which are recessive, you can start to anticipate the results and plan your crosses to get the traits you want in your future generations. Now that you know the power game, let's distinguish between the book and the story it tells. The phenotype is the story, the part we can all see. It's the physical appearance of your bird, the color of its feathers, the type of comb, the color of its eyes. It's the final result of all the genetic information it carries. But behind that visible phenotype is the genotype, the combination of genes, the secret code. The genotype is the key to understanding why a bird might look a certain way but still carry hidden genes that can be passed on to its offspring. A bird might look white, but if it carries a recessive gene for frizzle feathers, it can pass it on to its chicks, creating a surprise in the next generation. Understanding this difference is like having a key that allows you to see beyond the surface. When a breeder sees a bird, they don't just see the phenotype, they imagine the genotype it carries. This is the first step to mastering genetics because it gives you the ability to think in terms of what the bird can offer, not just what it is. The secret of the genotype lies in its gene pairs. Each trait is determined by two copies, one from each parent. When a bird has two identical copies of a gene, it is homozygous. This is a powerful term, because it means the bird will always pass that same gene on to its offspring. No surprises here. But the real adventure begins when a bird is heterozygous, meaning it has two different copies of a gene. One of them will be dominant and the other recessive. In this case, the dominant trait will be visible, but the recessive trait will be latent, waiting for its opportunity. 
Heterozygous birds are a box of genetic surprises, as they have the potential to pass on the recessive trait that might surprise you in the future. Understanding the difference between these two states is what gives you control. If you want to fix a trait in your line of birds, you seek homozygosity. If you want to introduce new genetics or experiment with varied results, you seek heterozygosity. It's your decision as a breeder, and it's the basis for planning your flock. For centuries, breeding seemed like a lottery. But today, we have an incredible tool that gives you the power to predict the results. Imagine you have a crystal ball for your chicken coop. That crystal ball is the Punnett Square. It's not just a square with letters. It's a map of the genetic probabilities of your next chicks. By simply understanding the genotype of your parents, you can use the Punnett Square to visualize the possible gene combinations in your offspring. You can predict the probability of chicks being born with barred plumage, a single comb, or feathered legs. It's a powerful tool that allows you to make strategic decisions instead of just crossing your fingers and hoping for the best. The Punnett Square gives you an invaluable advantage. It allows you to plan your crosses to highlight or eliminate specific traits. It is the step from accidental breeding to intentional breeding. Mastering this tool gives you the confidence to experiment and pursue your genetic goals with the assurance that your decisions have a solid scientific basis. To bring all this to life, let's talk about what you can see with your own eyes. The concepts we've discussed manifest in your bird's appearance. For example, the rose comb gene is dominant over the single comb. If a hen has one copy of the rose comb gene, her comb will always be that type. It's a dominant trait that always shows. Another example is frizzle plumage, a dominant trait that prevails over smooth plumage. Or the feathered leg trait, which is also dominant over clean legs. On the other hand, traits like a pea comb or recessive white plumage only show up when there isn't a dominant gene to cover them. Knowing these examples gives you a base to start observing your flock with the eyes of a geneticist. Now, when you see your birds, you won't just see an animal. You'll see the genetic story it carries and the possibilities it offers for your farm's future. It's an exciting first step toward mastery. Now that we have the fundamentals down, let's answer a question that dives into the true magic of avian genetics. One of our most dedicated followers asked us, would the transfer of the barring gene work if it were crossed with a breed that has the dominant white gene? The answer to this question takes us to a completely new level of genetics. Until now, we've talked about genes competing for control of a trait. But in nature, sometimes genes don't just compete. They simply ignore each other. Or one has so much power that it completely cancels out the other. This is a hidden layer of genetics that, once you discover it, gives you immense control over breeding. Imagine you have a master key that can open any door. That's how these genetic interactions work. It's not just about which trait is stronger, but how one gene can influence the expression of another, creating results that defy the simple rules we learned at the beginning. It's the reason why breeding sometimes seems so mysterious and full of surprises. Understanding these interactions prepares you for anything. You can avoid the frustration of a cross that doesn't turn out as you expected and, instead, use that knowledge to plan and manipulate your bird's genetics with amazing precision. It's the secret of breeders who seem to have a magical ability to get the exact result they want. The concept that helps us understand our followers' question is called epistasis. It's a term that sounds complex, but the idea is very simple. It's when one gene acts as a master switch or an invisible cloak that completely hides the expression of another gene. Even though the second gene is present in the bird's genetic code, its trait will not show up in the phenotype. This phenomenon is fascinating because it shows us that the path of a gene from DNA to plumage isn't always direct. There can be genes along the way that stop its expression. The epistatic gene has the final say on the trait that will be shown, and that's why it's so important to know which ones they are. Epistasis is the key to understanding why some breeds look a certain way. It's the reason a breeder can have a genetic surprise, and it's the reason why avian genetics never ceases to be exciting. Once you understand epistasis, you stop seeing your birds as simple animals and start seeing them as carriers of genetic stories. The best example of epistasis in the world of birds is the color inhibitor gene, known as gene I. This gene is responsible for the white plumage in breeds like the leghorn. Many people believe these chickens are white because they simply lack pigment, but the truth is much more interesting. Gene I is a dominant gene with astonishing epistatic power. Its job is to prevent other color genes from being expressed. Imagine gene I is a genetic sensor. If a bird has genes to be black, blue, or barred, but also has gene I, this gene will override the expression of all the others. The result is completely white plumage. This is why our follower's question is so crucial. It demonstrates that you can't simply transfer a color trait and expect it to appear if a color inhibitor gene is in the way. It's a reminder that genetics is a game of strategy, not just luck. To show you the contrast in power, 
Let's talk about the recessive white gene, gene C, which is found in breeds like the White Wyandotte, White Plymouth Rock, or White Rhode Island, among others. This gene also causes white plumage, but it does so in a completely different way. Unlike gene I, gene C is not epistatic and does not have the power to override other genes. For a bird to be white due to this gene, it must inherit two recessive copies of it. If a bird has this gene along with a color gene, like the barring gene, the color gene will be expressed without any problem. The bird would not be white. This is vital for any breeder, because it shows that not all white genes are the same. The difference between gene I and gene C is the heart of epistasis in birds. Knowing this difference gives you the power to predict whether a cross with a white bird will give you white chicks or colored chicks. You're no longer at the mercy of chance. You're making informed decisions that guarantee the result you're looking for. So let's go back to the original question. If you cross a barred bird with a bird that carries the dominant white gene, gene I, would the barring gene work? The answer is no. And now you know why. The barring gene is transferred and is present in the chick's genetic code, but gene I acts as a sensor, preventing the barring pattern from showing up. For the barring pattern to appear again, you would need to cross that white chick with a bird that doesn't have gene I. Only when the inhibitor gene is absent can the barring gene finally be expressed. It's a process of patience and knowledge, a dance of genes that shows why a white bird can be a silent carrier of a trait you can't see. Unlike the color inhibitor gene, the recessive white gene does not have the ability to override or mask other genes. Its job is simply to stop pigment production, but only if the bird inherits two copies of it. In this case, the barring gene B is dominant. When a bird carries it, it is fully expressed without interference. If we cross a barred bird with a bird that carries the recessive white gene, the offspring will exhibit the barred plumage pattern because the recessive gene for white doesn't have the power to turn off the color. This example is key because it teaches you to differentiate between genes that truly command, like gene I, and those that only act when they are given the space, like gene C. Understanding these examples is the bridge that takes you from theory to practice. With this knowledge, you can stop guessing and start planning your crosses to get the results you want. You stop being a spectator and become the director of your farm's genetics. Mastering these concepts is the key to mastery in breeding. It gives you a competitive advantage. You're no longer frustrated when a cross doesn't yield the expected result. Instead, you analyze it and understand why. It allows you to plan long-term breeding projects and develop your own lines of birds with unique and predictable characteristics. Knowledge of epistasis gives you the power to create. You can introduce valuable genes into your breeding line without them being visually expressed waiting for the right moment for them to appear in future generations. It turns you into a genetic detective, capable of deciphering the mysteries of your flock. It's the step from being a hobbyist to being an artist of breeding. And now, we come to one of the deepest and most crucial questions we've received, one that touches on a topic that frustrates many breeders. A follower asked us, could you talk about how to make a recessive gene we want to perpetuate dominant through absorption crosses? This is a fantastic question because it addresses a very common misconception and allows us to get to the root of genetics. Many breeders, when they fall in love with a recessive trait, wish it were easier to perpetuate and wonder if they can change its status to dominant. The truth is that, on a genetic level, a recessive gene cannot become dominant. Dominance and recessiveness are inherent characteristics of the gene, part of its fundamental nature. But don't be discouraged. Although we can't change the nature of the gene, we can change the way it manifests in our coop. The goal isn't to change the gene, but to master the rules of the game so that the trait you love appears in every bird you breed. It's a change in mindset that takes you from frustration to strategic planning. So if you can't make it dominant, what is the goal? The real goal is to fix or perpetuate that trait. This means that through a careful breeding plan, you will ensure that the recessive trait manifests in every bird in your line, in every generation, without ever being hidden again. This is the goal of every purebred breeder. They want their birds to be so consistent that there are no surprises. They want that special trait to become the hallmark of their work, in the DNA of their hatchery. It's a process of selection and patience, where every breeding decision has a clear purpose and a final goal. Fixing a trait gives you amazing control over your flock. It means that from that moment on, every time that bird reproduces, the offspring will show the desired trait. It is the final result of a job well done. The secret to fixing a recessive trait is found in the concept of homozygosity. As you already know, a recessive trait is only expressed when a bird has two copies of that gene, one from each parent. The key to perpetuating it is to get all the birds in your line to be homozygous for that trait. When you achieve this, the trait no longer has a place to hide. Every bird in your line carries two copies of the recessive gene. 
When they cross, there is no chance for a dominant gene to appear and hide it. The result is 100% of the offspring showing the trait that you worked so hard to find and fix. This is the holy grail of breeding. The pursuit of homozygosity is what drives the most successful breeders. It's a challenge, but the reward for achieving it is seeing how the trait you love becomes the hallmark of your line of birds. Now the big question, how is this achieved? Breeders have developed very specific strategies. One of them is the absorption cross, which is used to transfer a trait from one breed to another. But the most used technique for fixing a recessive trait is backcrossing. Backcrossing is a powerful tool. It consists of crossing the offspring back to the parent that has the desired trait. This process is repeated generation after generation, with the goal of gradually increasing the percentage of the recessive gene in each bird in your line. It's a methodical process, almost like genetic alchemy. Every backcross is an opportunity to get closer to your goal. It's not a shortcut. It's a long-term commitment to the purity and consistency of your line. It requires careful record-keeping, rigorous selection, and above all, a clear vision of what you want to achieve. Fixing a recessive trait is not a project that happens overnight. It's a commitment that can take several generations, often four to six, for the trait to manifest consistently. That's why patience is the most important trait of a successful breeder. But the reward is incomparable. At the end of this process, you won't just have a coop full of birds that exhibit the trait you love. You'll also have a deep understanding of your own flock's genetics. You will have gone from being a simple breeder to a master. This is the true prize. The satisfaction of knowing that your dedication and knowledge have paid off, creating a line of birds that is a reflection of your passion. It's the culmination of the art and science of breeding. The true prize of this entire process is not just having a coop full of birds that exhibit the trait you loved. It's the profound satisfaction of knowing that your patience, your knowledge, and your dedication have paid off. You will have stopped being a simple breeder and become an artist of genetics, a master who molds offspring to reflect a vision. The final result of your work is a consistent and predictable line of birds. You will no longer have to worry about whether a cross produces an unwanted surprise. The trait you chose and cultivated becomes the hallmark of your hatchery, a legacy that will endure for generations. It is your signature in the DNA of your animals, the proof of your mastery. This is the reward that makes every backcross, every record, and every decision worthwhile. The joy of seeing that frizzle plumage, that specific comb, or that unique color, knowing that you achieved it with knowledge and strategy. It's a feeling of pride and accomplishment that only breeders who commit to this path can experience. It is the culmination of the art and science of breeding. And so, we conclude our journey through the fascinating world of avian genetics. A journey that was made possible by the curiosity of our community. I hope you now see your birds not just as farm animals, but as living canvases of genetic possibilities. May every feather and every comb tell a story that you can now understand. We have gone from the basics to mastery, from simple observation to strategic planning. Breeding is an art and a science, and the true secret is the passion you put into it. I hope this video has sparked a fire within you, a thirst for knowledge that drives you to keep learning and to enjoy every step of the process. Thank you for being a part of this community and for making this channel a place where a passion for animals brings us together. It's an honor to share this path with you. If this video sparked a question in you, leave your question in the comments. Your curiosity is our greatest inspiration and what makes this channel so special. Don't forget to give us a like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss the next video. To your success, fellow breeder, until next time.